Hello everyone and welcome to the short video tutorial series of Planet Pro created by Wenji Chow and myself. I'm Mike Shaw. After so many videos on other features, we're finally ready to talk about the ephemeris feature in Planet Pro. All the ephemeris information you see over here in this ephemeris page is related to the location and the time. We've covered how to adjust the location when talking about the camera pin in the previous video number 4, Camera and Scene Pins. In this video, let's talk about how to adjust the date and the time, which is in the area at the bottom. If you don't see the date and time panel, it's because of one of two reasons. First, tap the menu to see the first menu item. If it says Purchase Pro Feature, it means you didn't activate the Pro Feature. Purchasing the Pro Feature will fix this. Otherwise, if it says Pro Feature Activated, but you still don't see the date and time panel, it means you disabled it. In this case, simply swipe down from the title bar like this, and the date and the time panel will show up. So let's say you want to plan a shot for a particular time. You can simply tap the date and time value here. Now you can change the time. To change the date, tap this date button here. You can toggle between the date and time by tapping the date or the time button on the bottom. This is for the Android. If you're on the iOS, the interface will be different, but you can still change the date and time in a similar way. We call this the date picker and the time picker. If you want to jump to a particular year, this date picker is the preferred way to go as you can easily select the year. Another way to change the date and the time is to use the slider on the bottom. You can drag it left or right, and notice how the time here changes while you're dragging it. Now the date value can appear in different colors. If it's green, it means the time here is within one day of the current time. It could be before or after the current time. If it's blue, it's sometime in the future. And if it's orange, it's sometime in the past. We've done this because we found that people sometimes accidentally change the date to the wrong year and that messed up their plans. So for example, if you're working on a plan for today, but the color here is blue, you need to watch out because something went wrong. At any time, you can tap this clock button to go back to the current time. Now the clock icon is green, which means the time here is the current time. The time here will keep changing to always show the current time until you drag the slider to change the time again. You can also press and hold on the clock icon to lock the time so that the time will not be accidentally changed. This is the sun's elevation angle in azimuth. This is the moon's elevation angle in azimuth. While dragging the slider, notice how the sun and the moon lines change on the map. The values here change as well. If you're on the sun and moon position page, you can see those same values as well. Let's take a look. Notice how they're exactly the same. But since we don't have enough space to label those values, we use colors to indicate them. And we always use the same colors consistently throughout the app. Just remember orange is for the sun. So those two values are the sun's elevation angle and azimuth. How do you know this is the elevation angle? Let's take a close look at this icon. This icon is also consistently used throughout Planet to indicate the angle, after the icon is an elevation angle. Then the other value is the azimuth. The blue color means the moon, so those two values are the moon's elevation angle and azimuth. These values are very important to us when we plan. That's why we want them to always be visible, regardless of which ephemeris page you're on. For example, if I change to the time lapse page, you can't see the sun and the moon elevation angle and azimuth on the top anymore, but you can still find them down here. If you're on one of the two Milky Way pages, we'll show the Milky Way Center's elevation angle and azimuth too. The color for the Milky Way Center is green. By the way, if you take a look at our logo, you'll see the same colors. Orange means the sun, blue means the moon, and green means the Milky Way Center. And the middle one is the Earth, which of course is where we are. Now, if you're on the star page, we'll show you the selected star's elevation in azimuth. You can tap here where it says Polaris to change to another star, a planet, and even a deep sky object if you want. The color for stars and other deep sky objects is yellow. The slider has a background to indicate whether it's day or night, and even the golden hour, the blue hour, and so forth. We also draw this blue line to indicate the moon's visible period. For example, here's the moon rise, and here's the moon set. And if you're on a Milky Way page, you can also see the green line for the Milky Way Center's visible period. So by comparing the two lines of the moon and the Milky Way Center, you'll be able to know exactly when they overlap. For example, during this period, you can see the Milky Way Center without the moon. But during this period here, the moon and the Milky Way Center will both be above the horizon, which is not so good, 
but you can focus on the time when the moon just rises right here. This could be a great photo opportunity. Again, if you're on the star page, you'll see the selected star or deep sky object's visibility period by looking at this yellow line. Right now, Polaris is selected and it's visible all night. That's why the yellow line covers the whole night. If you choose Sirius on the other hand, you'll see the yellow line only covers part of the night, and right here is where Sirius rises. We also show the map in different shades of color depending on the time of day or night. Let's look closely here at the map. Can you see how when I change the time to daytime, the map gets brighter? You may not notice it, but that's okay. Let's drag the time to nighttime. Do you see how the map gets darker? Also, if the moon rises, we'll make the map slightly brighter. So you may wonder why we do all this, and it's simply because when you use planet at night while shooting the night sky, we don't want your phone screen to be too bright to affect your night vision. If you feel the map is too dark, you can always go to settings, then map, and then map day-night color change to disable it. So there's actually five sliders here. What we just talked about is the hour slider. If you tap the side of the slider, you can switch to different sliders. Tap on the right side, this is the minute slider. You can drag the minute slider, note the time changes much slower. This slider allows you to really fine tune the time. Tap on the left, it's the hour slider again. Tap again, now it's the day slider. You can tell if it's a day slider by seeing the moon icons for the different moon phases that will be present on each day. Only the day slider has these moon phases. Notice that some of the moon icons have underlines. These are special moon phases. For example, this is a 100% full moon. The icons before and after it all look the same. That's why we added this underline to indicate this one right here is the actual 100% full moon. This one is a 50% half moon, or the quarter moon. And this one is a 0%, or the new moon. Tap again, and you'll see the month slider. Once more, and you'll see the year slider. And now if you tap one more time on the year slider on the left side, it'll cycle back to the minute slider. So alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and enjoy learning and using Planet.